The Raven's Block presents The Black Files. An uncensored interview and review podcast for all geek fandom. Welcome everybody, friends and pals, guys and gals, boys and girls around the world, pop a squad, pop open a cold one with all your friends. It is Wednesday night, a couple of hairs past 10 p.m., a little, a few hairs out of place, which is a little weird, but th- th- thankfully you're not out of place, because you have been granted access to the uncensored and uncompromising interview and review podcast of Raven's Blog. So, whether you're a friend of your fiend, boy, girl, or in between, you are tuned in to a brand new episode of The Black Files. All right. Welcome one, welcome all on Wednesday, April 10th. We hope you guys are having a wonderful evening. We do have quite a bit to discuss. I uh, guess you could call this somewhat of a follow-up from our previous topic a couple weeks ago, but we'll get to that when we get to that. It actually is a full-on follow-up here, so there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, we appreciate you guys uh, joining us tonight, and we appreciate uh, uh, I appreciate my uh, uh co-hosts over here with me i'm your host juan arouse uh welcome to the black files i'm one of the heads of the ravens flock the tech guru of the team i'm the guy who apparently to save my life can't get this cowlick to go down i was doing everything <laughs> little stupid little thing just sticking out screw you cowlick nah. yeah whatever i'm, I'm, I'm not vain I'm, i don't have i have zero sense of like like oh my my ego is bruised like the, the fuck do i care you know, like, yes, if I want to be presentable, I will make every effort to be presentable. But nine times out of ten, you guys see me with a full growth of facial hair up in here. And my hair is a big shaggy mess to begin with, so who cares? Uh, but thankfully, I am not alone in that manner. Uh, we all seem to be having our own little deals, but I'm not going to hold it against anyone. So joining me tonight are our usual suspects. First off, I've got Zayanna Rose and Dragon Fan cosplay. Uh, so, hey, hello, ladies. Welcome to the show. Appreciate your face. Guys, we almost didn't make it because I got an alert on my on my phone saying that my email has been found on the dark web. So I had to go and change everything. Jeez, yeah, so much folks, fun! If, if we had like a Nord VPN or Express VPN uh, sponsorship deal or whatever, you better believe we would not screw around. We would freaking we would use that to like there's no tomorrow in order to because if there's one thing that none of us screw around with it's with uh our digital footprint and with our uh uh personal identity uh, and our personal identifying information and no one knows this better than the main man himself the head of the raven's flock the founder of our channel and uh executive producer and content manager as well and the host of wrestle rewind and the raven's flock folks give it up for mr jose Kessa Well, I thank you very much for that warm introduction, Wancho. Happy to be here this evening with our other fellow castmates and with the folks watching us live. Appreciate every single one of you guys. And if you know what we're about, you know what we're about. Here on The Black Files, we delve into the darker side of nerd and pop culture. We cut to the heart of the matter. We cut to the truth of the matter. We give our opinions. We give our thoughts. They're uncensored and uncompromising because we don't believe in having to filter your thoughts when it comes to speaking the truth. Not like, oh, this is my personal truth. Like, the truth. Capital T-H-E, truth. All right? Ron the truth killings. That kind of truth. That truth, except not that bizarre. But folks, uh, you all know what we're all about over here. Jose, do me a favor. Go ahead and take care of the housekeeping, if you'd be so kind. Of course, absolutely. And much, and, and just like all our other sh- shows, we are simulcasting on YouTube and Kick. Hit the subscribe or the follow button on the bottom right corner of your screen. Click the bell icon to enable notifications. Leave your questions and comments below. We'll answer as many as we can. And if you wish to go above and beyond... To support the Ravens flock, then you can become an inner flocker. For $4.99 a month, you'll have access to all the perks that comes with our membership. Juan, tell them. Well, for all the inner flockers we've got in our chat, and I know we have plenty, go ahead and show off those loving membership badges and custom emojis, letting everyone know that you're stepping up to rescue the Ravens flock from the clutches of late-stage capitalismos and become full-on YouTubers for your enjoyment, 
for our peace of mind and for more, more importantly because we want to be our own bosses we wish to be our own masters now and we've been working on this uh, uh, mission since 2013 uh, which is to make your voice our mission and we've been working hard at it and we know that we can continue doing a good job if we're able to do it full time so with your help we can and we will succeed in that front all we need is your help to help us uh, reach more subscribers to reach more people who are willing to become inner flockers as well and and uh, it, anytime, and, and uh, every time you guys show up, it means the world to us. And we can't continue doing this without your continued support. So we appreciate you guys ten times over and a hundred times again. You also get access to members first and members only content, a special discount to our merch store. Link in the description below. And you get access to us, the Ravens Flock, your favorite Motley Crew nerds, here to make your voice our mission by providing us your thoughts, your input, your feedback, and your ideas on how to better shape the future of this channel to suit your taste and your needs. So I'm going ahead and say hello to the folks in our YouTube chat. We've got Nikki Bella, Project Metal Music, Kurisi Randosama, and Lisa Boo, Vicente Guerrero uh, are all up in the chat. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. And speaking of Lisa Boo, looks like she She's been celebrating having been an inner flocker for 13 months. Yay! Nice. Awesome. Thank you very much. It really does. Thank you so much for your continuing support, Lisa Boone, to all of you inner flockers. And uh, truthfully, today has been uh, one of those days that feels like we've been dragging our ass from uh, across hot coals uh, without any sense of reward just scraping by and usually what we uh, what you uh, uh, when, the, when you have those kind of days you'd call them mondays but somehow monday came in the middle of the week this week for me so i don't know what to call it i can't call it wednesday because wednesday i have some kind of life in me but since the calendar says i guess it is wednesday but the point is we're tired i know i'm tired as hell but uh, thankfully we're not uh, we're not under equipped on that front, which is why I'm glad that we here at the Ravens Flock are partnered up with Glitch Energy tonight. I'm actually loading up with uh, our hydration uh, blend for Glitch Revive, which is the blackberry lemon innate flavoring, and uh, and uh, and Glitch Energy is your number one source from the Ravens Flock in order to help you stay energized for all, uh, for your whole day in terms of your uh, the daily activities, whether it's work, play, uh, whether it's uh, physical activities where you need to get uh, get your the, the blood pumping or mental activities where you actually need to stay focused without crashing, then Glitch has got you covered. Am I right, Jose? That is right. And you know what? It's not uh, it's not just uh, the it's not just the uh, high energy drinks that uh, that glitch makes. They also make drinks to help revitalize your body and keep your body hydrated and endured. Um, I my personal favorite is the blackberry lemonade from the Revive brand. I am looking to try other other flavors and they also uh, have their own uh, um, line of supplements. Um, go, uh, stemming, uh, going down from uh, uh, immunity, uh, immunity boost, uh, testosterone boosts, uh, neotropics boosts, uh, helping your, uh, helping improve your vision. The list goes on. And if you go online to glitchenergy.com and use our promo code FLOCKFUEL, you'll receive a twenty percent discount on all of your purchases. Go, go, go ahead and uh, what are you waiting for? Head over to glitchenergy.com and use our promo code FLOCKFUEL to uh, uh, to get 20% off your purchase and try out Glitch Energy. Uh, these guys, uh, their uh, gaming energy blend comes with zero sugar, zero carbs, zero calories, and more importantly, zero crash. But the best part about all of this is that all their stuff tastes stupendous. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be ordering, and you can't stop me, Jose. Uh, they came out with a new flavor over here. Not just that, uh, not, not that, not just the uh, kindred kiwi, but they have MNK mango out of here, which is uh, uh, represented by uh, uh, by uh, uh, by a uh, uh, team called TSM Reps. If I'm not mistaken, these guys are uh, well. I actually don't know who they are, but apparently these guys are a big deal in the, in the gaming world, which is why these guys got their own flavor. Uh, from Glitch Energy. Yeah, dude, you're fine. You don't need. You don't need to tell me that. That's cool. No, M and yeah, folks, mango flavoring for Christ's sake. I don't. I don't care what, else what the branding is. It's mango. Okay, there's mango and there's wanna, kiwi. For shit's sake. We want to thank Glitch, and we want to thank Glitch for That's... partnering with the Ravens Flock. You guys are awesome. You may have made a serious mistake. 
spoiler alert, you did make a mistake. We're horrible people to be uh, uh, teamed up with. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, TSM reps the reps are uh, no reps is a uh, uh, pro gamer and he's a pro gamer of Apex Legends uh, for Team TSM. Okay, now I know, uh, now I get uh, what they're what they're on about. Okay, holy shit, I guess that is a big deal. Uh, but that just goes to show what I know. All right. Um, okay, I think we're making a big deal. Green Eyed Dragon made it into the chat. Did you guys try the glitch vitamins for your eyes by chance? Well, I haven't tried it yet. We're going to get to it. But it, I'm, I mean, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have us actually uh, hook up to it. Also, uh, Matthew Coburn's in the chat. Hey, up there, Matthew Coburn. We appreciate you. If you said Guerrero's over here saying, uh, Juancho can change the original Melrose place from Monday's a bitch. Flip it to Wednesday. Be, uh, same point goes on a ballpoint cap. Ha. Adorable. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, no. So tonight, like you said, it's going to be a uh, follow-up. And uh, it's not going to be too pretty. Uh, but thankfully, it's not going to be nearly as horrendous as uh, we might have imagined that it was going to be. Now, um, you go ahead and tell uh, you go ahead and tell uh, tell me, Jose. Um, do you think we have to go ahead and do a recap, or what do we need to do first? I think we have to give our. Discussion I think we first right. need to do an obligatory disclaimer. Yeah, there we go. Thank you for that. Okay, folks. Since we are going to be following up on our coverage of the uh, Investigation Discovery documentary miniseries, Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, if you guys recall, a couple weeks ago, we had an episode of The Black Files where we discussed this uh, documentary series where it alleges, uh, where, uh, where there are claims of, of uh, emotional and... Um, so, and mental and even sexual mistreatment and abuse perpetrated against children, children who are meant uh, who are just there to be actors, who are just there to uh to uh try to enjoy themselves and try to uh work in the entertainment business. It's not a pretty subject. It's not for the faint of heart. Uh, viewer discretion is advised if you go ahead and watch that uh, uh, that uh, uh, series. Uh, it's on Investigation Discovery or on the Max app if you uh, stream on Max. But uh, this is not a pretty subject. It's not for the faint of heart. So for the love of God and all that's holy, t if you're sensitive to these kind of uh, uh, topics, then uh, we urge you to... Um, we urge you to uh, watch at your discretion. Otherwise, um, we're just going to go ahead and uh, roll on through with our uh, uh, review on this. Straightforward, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay, and I went ahead and I've got the, uh, uh, the link for the episode where we covered it in full of the first four episodes uh, in the group chat. So, not, not in the group chat, in the live chat on the, on the YouTube feed. So... Yeah. Okay. Disclaimer's over. All right. Um. God, this sucks. Jose, can you give me a TLDR for this that we we can all uh, get on the same page? Hang on. <laughs> or would you like me to? It sounds like I think it's best if you do it. Yeah. Are you snacking on something? Are you actively chewing on a thing? I, I'm eating a cookie. I need something sweet uh, since we're going to talk about something that's not so sweet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Share the cookie. Yes, please. It's an Oreo cookie. <laughs> Share the cookie. Jose has the dark chocolate filled Oreos because he's an angsty boy. Actually, no. Yes, it's chocolate peanut butter. Actually, no. It's chocolate mm. peanut butter pie. Oh, even better. But please, go on. Continue. Okay, so short version. Uh, former cast members, production assistants, writers, and other people who worked on in Nickelodeon, yes, the uh, kids studio, the kids TV channel, uh, from the early 90s on to the, uh, shall we say, the middle of the, uh, of the aughts, of the 2000s, I suppose, yes. had come forward in this four-episode documentary discussing their... Uh, experiences working under uh, executive producer Dan Schneider, who was basically pretty much pointed out as being not only uh, had he been a 
uh, brilliant and driving mm-hmm. force for the entertainment business in pioneering uh, live kids programming for Nickelodeon, but it turns out the guy's a giant asshole, mm-hmm. and he had uh, instigated an environment of mistreatment, verbal abuse, and uh, unfortunately mm-hmm. leading to a climate in which mm-hmm. sexual predators felt comfortable in uh, go- in trying to get away with doing things to uh children and one such predator actually got away with it for uh for quite a bit of time unfortunately and yeah the first yeah the first two episodes that we saw pretty uh, pretty much de- uh, shows testimonies from uh different people who worked in Nickelodeon studios uh, in front of the camera and behind the camera and their experiences with Dan Schneider and the stuff that he was getting away with um, behind the scenes and uh, the stuff that he approved uh, to be aired on TV, which was very, uh, very Sexually grotesque. Sexually suggestive and innuendo-y. Sexually suggestive and innuendo yeah. The l- latter of the two episodes, the, the, all, the la- uh, episode three and episode four, focuses on something a little bit more specific. Actually, yeah, three and four actually uh, 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 zero in on the experience of young uh, Drake Bell. Yes, uh, why would I say that he's young? He's my age, almost. <laughs> Ish. Uh, yeah, no, he's a little. Wait, how much older is he than me, or younger? I forget. You call you could call him Mister Drake Bell. That'll that'll put some. Uh, yeah, age no, into he's it. about six months older than me. About five or six months older. Jesus. And uh, he was basically speaking about on his experience mm-hmm. uh, while he was working on the hit show Drake and Josh, where he was living with a uh, dialogue coach. It was a tumultuous time for him as a uh, teenager slash uh, younger adult uh, into his uh, younger age. Uh, and that person that he was living with, uh, rather than living with his mother or his father, um turned out to have been sexually abusing him and this guy by the name of brian peck had been taken to court and he was uh found guilty of having committed uh a, a, a sexual assault with an unarmed uh, with a with a with a minor um and uh, apparently the guy didn't get much more than maybe 18 months of jail time. Which was an absolute disgrace in the t- in terms of the execution of justice. And no, we're not trying to talk about hit, uh, like executing a person, although that wouldn't be, uh, that wouldn't uh, go amiss in this kind of situation. Um, but putting it simply, it was more the experience of how did, uh, Dan Schneider uh, cultivate this climate and how uh, uh, how like I, I, I like to say the bucks uh, the fish rots from the head down so if like, like everything can be laid at Dan Schneider's feet since the premiere of this uh, horrendous fucking uh, st- like, uh, documentary series and we say horrendous as in like it's fucking terrible it's fucking uh, like depressing and sad and shit which came out on uh march 17th and the and march 18th so sunday march 17th and monday march 18th is when the first four episodes came out and the follow-up episode which is what we're discussing now aired on uh sunday the 7th so uh like uh, basically this like uh, this appears to be the only real follow-up that this is going to have uh, anytime uh, soon so uh, you better believe, folks, that uh, it, on the one hand, while it, uh, while this uh, fifth episode might be a little anemic in terms of getting any more uh, like details or any more juicy shit, it's more a matter of trying to get uh, additional insight from uh, some of the talent who came forward and spoke up in the documentary. Now that there's been some time to digest and there's been a, uh, about a week or so or like a two and a half weeks or so of uh of time for all this to come out and to uh be uh inseminated to the rest of uh mainstream media for people to know about so um i know that y'all three y'all four 
uh, have been uh, with with me on this uh, discussion, and we were all pretty much in consensus. This, this Dan Schneider is a fucking idiot. He's a fucking asshole for letting this happen to to kids on his watch, and the way that he was treating uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, actors and his uh, and his uh, production assistants and writers on set was absolutely abhorrible abhorrent as i mean also we got uh kelsey kelsey reesers in the chat hey up there kelsey welcome to the black files and sarah serenity sarah serenity magical cosplay how's it going sweetheart hope you're doing okay i know you've been having a couple of bad head days i'm so sorry about that sweetie and i hope you're doing uh, all right and uh just know that uh we're here for you and and in, in, in case if you need to talk um go ahead and give me your y'all's thoughts so far before i go ahead and uh cut into the meat of the matter here or if there's anything you need me to recap for you guys just to get you fresh and back up. I hope nothing too horrible. Because, like I said, this is a fucking travesty. I I know that uh, we still haven't watched it, but that's also personal reasons. Yeah. So, to hear that there's a bonus episode, it was a bonus episode, right? Yes, uh, a bonus episode. Yeah, of to hear... Yeah, to hear that there's a bonus episode following up on this, I'm like, oh my god. Uh... Well, like I said, it's the crazy. You know, the good news is is that the this bonus episode bit, all this basically comes from uh, like basically some of the uh, uh, child actors who were uh, in the original uh, in the original four episodes. Um, like I said, this includes uh, Drake Bell himself on like a remote uh, uh, Zoom call kind of interview, uh, along with all that actors. Uh, let's see here. What's his name? Um, shoot, uh, Brian Hearn, uh, Giovanni Samuels, and um, let's see who's the third guy. Uh, Shane Lyons, and also uh, Raquel Lee Borlo. She was on the Amanda Show, and how that was uh, how they, they'd all had now that they've all had time to uh, like look back at the work that was done in the documentary and how people are reacting to them. It's their take on how everything's been rolling out for all this uh now so you guys know the actual inter the actual episode itself was hosted by uh a journalist by journalist soledad o'brien um so she was the one who was actually uh uh discussing all this uh and actually sitting on a round table with everyone on it so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to go ahead and first i'm gonna share this uh link from time uh from time magazine from time.com uh hate to say there's gonna be more says kelsey oh uh, i really hope not just the ugh, this is not fun this was no bueno to sit through uh jose and i we even did our own watch uh, like a watch along kind of thing when we were uh discussing when we were uh, originally going to be reviewing the first episodes the first four and jose and i we were just I was anticipating. I was anticipating that it was likely going to be worse. To be honest, like I, I thought it was going to be worse than, uh, than, 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 than the other episodes. But you know, I, I... thankfully, Juan it wasn't was... nearly as bad as as we expected. But it wasn't. Uh, uh, it didn't do anything to smooth out anyone's rough edges either. So. Like uh, so, it's not like they're doing anything. Uh, it's uh, like to Dan Schneider's any favor, you know, they're doing any favors for him. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna read y'all this uh, uh, this quick uh, article from Time, uh, from Time Magazine. Uh, headline on it reads: Everything we learned from Episode Five of Quiet on Set. All right, and so this is brought up by Moises Mendez the uh, second, and see, we've even got the uh, three. Uh, Former child actors talking with each other with Soledad O'Brien over on the uh, far right on the frame over here, this photo. So, okay, on Sunday night, Investigation Discovery released a fifth episode of Quaint on Set, a docuseries that ge has generated much conversation about what happened behind the scenes of several popular children's TV shows in the late 1990s and 2000s. The series' for his first four episodes tell the story of the allegedly toxic workplace culture on Dan Schneider's Nickelodeon shows. In the fifth episode, journalist Soledad O'Brien interviews former cast members of Schneider 
various shows, including one who had previously not spoken out, but chose to come forward to discuss his experience with Brian Peck, the former dialogue coach who pleaded no contest to sexually abusing actor Drake Bell when the latter was a teenager. The docuseries, originally billed as a four-part series before the additional episode was announced, aired on Max. Yep, we already said this part. It features interviews with former Nickelodeon employees, including Giovanni Samuels, Kyle Sullivan, and Brian Hurd, all of whom worked on uh, all that. While the series asserts that Schneider was viewed as Nickelodeon's golden boy because he was the creative mastermind behind the network's biggest shows, including Drake and Josh, iCarly, Victorious, Sam and Cat, and Zoe 101. Let's not forget the Amanda show as well. Uh, many of the people involved in those series allege that Schneider created a toxic work environment for cast and crew. Schneider then released a video on YouTube two days after the docuseries aired in response to the allegations against him in which he acknowledges that he could have done some things differently. His fucking uh, video, by the way. The yeah, I think we talked about it on that episode. Yeah, yeah his response yeah, was. We, we brought it up. And these guys also brought it up on this bonus episode. How his apology video just was piss poor it was anemic at best and it was basically uh like self-serving at worst it was just that wasn't an apology video no it wasn't it was just pathetic on his on his end uh he wasn't doing anyone any favors with how he's like oh if if i could do it all over again absolutely i wouldn't uh behave this way and all this other it's it was so I'm not like it's like, okay. buddy. You were an adult then. You're an adult now. Like even I, you, I've, you knew better. Even in like it, with uh, God, sorry. The stupid thing is, but is annoying me though. Stupid cowlicks. I'm sorry. Um, I've even pulled out quotes from his stupid uh, uh, twenty minute uh, apology, non apology. Uh, all, let's see here. All these jokes that you're speaking of was uh, quote was written for a kids audience that uh, uh, that thought that these jokes were funny. Uh, it's only inappropriate in hindsight. These jokes uh, went over the uh, 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 these jokes might have gone over the kids' heads during all that. And uh, and he was also talking about how basically there was uh, an issue of of uh how some of the kids like some of the black actors who were on all that were kind of stereotyped into really shitty roles or into fucking doing stuff that was just uh like fucking horrendous uh, to do like like that like that one uh bit where they had an opening of uh this one kid who was an actor on all that and he was a black kid he was in a girl scouts dress um, hang on. I've actually got my notes from when I was uh, doing all this. Yeah, I still have my notes up so, uh, from uh, when when we did this shit, guys. Let me see here. Okay. Uh, where is it? Okay, so. All right, I think I found it. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah. Is yeah. It was Brian Hearn. It was Brian Hearn who was done with the. Uh, who was done dirty on this uh, story uh, where he was dressed up in Girl Scout uh, in like a Girl Scout uniform and he was uh, made to look like he was selling drugs, like being all clandestine, like, oh, hey, psst, you want some Girl Scout cookies? I got Girl Scout cookies right here. Come on. And obviously the 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 uh, fucking uh, uh, the implication on it is like, oh, hey, the black person is selling drugs that's a fucking stereotype and the way they tried to write it off like no it's because he's a boy just in a girl scouts uniform complete with the skirt and sash and everything he's not supposed to be in girl scout like come on we fucking see it we fucking see this shit come on man it like don't don't try that shit with us don't try to uh pull that over our eyes we can see that shit and there was also another skit that brian hearn was made to do uh when he was on all that where he was uh dressed in a full skin toned flesh like skin toned bodysuit calling uh, and uh doing a skit where he was a rapper called Lil Fetus as in he was still in the fucking womb and he was a rapper and that was so awful and obviously the kid felt embarrassed and shit because he's like he's this growing like not even 11 or 12 year old or whatever in a skin tight freaking bodysuit with people laughing at him while he's on a green screen like talking as if he was a fetus and had a, a bald cap and uh and a uh umbilical cord 
with the microphone on end or whatever the fuck it was. And like he was uh, ta- and he was talking about this, how it made him feel like denigrated and fucking like dehumanized over this shit. So I don't fucking blame him for that. Uh, let's see here. I'm taking a look over here in the chat. Uh, Matthew Coburn, man, Soledad sure did get up in the world. Known her since uh, CNET on Discovery Channel back in the 90s. Turns out Dan being creepy in the film, better off dead, is just the same in real life. I knew I misspelled her uh, Yeah, I, her name. Uh, been a long time since I read it. Okay, yeah. Uh, by the way, someone cosplayed the unknown at Mystic Con, says uh, uh, Sarah Sarandi. Oh, no. No, if you mean for the freaking Willy Wonka Glasgow trap thing. Oh... Oh, yeah. Oh, they came out with a full body mirror. Okay, I get it. And Vicente Guerrero saying it sounds like Dan Schneider took notes uh, off of Joey Ryan's apology slash non-apology. Ah, god damn it. The less I t- mention about Joey Ryan, the worse, uh, the better. Um, I'm gonna get into the rest of the article here, guys. Uh, let's see. One of the biggest revelations of the series comes in episode three, in which Bell, the star Drake, and Josh, a teen sitcom that ran from 2004 to 2007, reveals himself to be the John Doe in the child abuse case for which Peck, Brian Peck, served 16 months in prison. It wasn't even 18. So it was only 16 months. Shit. Uh, let's see here. So, yeah, and was required to register as a sex offender. Since the series came out, conversations around workplace safety and children's television has intensified, especially as many on social media have discussed the revelations of what the stars of their nostalgic childhood TV favorites endured when the cameras weren't rolling. A few of the former child actors who appeared throughout the first four episodes returned to discuss the response for the project has received with O'Brien in the new episode. Here's everything we learned of, uh, let's see here, of uh, from episode five and a refresher uh, leading up to, the, uh, to it. So we already got that stuff. Okay, so... Um, since we, uh, since guys, we already know a lot of the creepy, gross shit that Dan Schneider would try to sneak in the sexual innuendo for, uh, the, the younger girls to do like, what's her face? Like Ariana Grande makes it look like she's giving head to a potato or, uh, Jamie Lynn Spears having some liquid goo candy come shot on her face, which was obviously like fucking horrible. Um, before I get into episode five, thoughts, anybody help me out. Oh God, it was, it was just so fucking gross to see all this. Like, I'm sorry, man. But like I said, the Dan Schneider's apology, that was not an apology. That was just a video of his pathetic attempt to try to cover his ass for everything that he did that he knew was wrong. Like I said, he's an adult then he's an adult now. He knew better then, and he chose to stick to his fucking guns. And I, uh, again, to this day, I haven't seen the final episode, but we have talked about it, and I did look up the article about it when we spoke when we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago. God, it just fucking blows my fucking mind that in that uh, that that there were folks that there was a lot of people that showed up in that in that court day. Side on the side of uh, of the abuser on of, uh, what's his face Brian Peck of Peck yeah that of was Brian fu- Peck that was a fucking horrible part about it that uh, um that Brian Peck showed up on the day of his sentencing and he had so many different uh, members of the entertainment business who were who had written letters of clemency to the judge who were there to support him in the actual courthouse and how he fucking even had a. Uh, how his entire uh, side of the uh, courtroom was filled up, whereas Drake uh, Bell himself only had him, his mom, and his brother. And it was just, like, heartbreaking and shit. (sighs) Like, what more can you fucking... What more can anyone, like, think on that? It's just... It's reprehensible. It's fucking depressing, knowing that no matter what the actual allegations themselves were. It's like fucking, uh, it's just fucking, uh, depressing seeing how fucking bad it, it got, uh, it, it was on the day and how traumatizing it must have been for Drake to see all these people standing by his abuser. And it's, fu- and it was fucked, right? Very much so. Yes. Ladies.
Oh, hang on. We're having a trouble hearing you. Oh, no. I'm, I'm trying to sigh. I'm trying to find the words. It's just... It's mind-blowing, honestly. You have no words. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, I, I don't really have too much else to say, honestly. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, no, it was, it was fucking... It, like, it was just fucking disgusting when we had to basically relitigate all that stuff with uh having to give ourselves a recap on this i'm seeing kelsey reeser in the chat saying uh there's a whole 400 hot dogs and you get a baby uh after amanda Bynes had to have uh allegedly had to have an abortion over here yeah um yeah your belly looks empty sell 400 hot dogs and get a free baby uh you could clearly see she was uncomfortable uh with that skit um, and, uh, this is, uh, allegedly after Amanda Bynes had an abortion, uh, at age 13. That wasn't touched on in the quiet Ooh. on set at all. That's a lot um, of trauma. Yeah, and, um, I'm over here, yeah, and, uh, it's, it's, these are, uh, allegations, uh, which, just for everyone to, 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 uh, to clarify for the record, guys, it's still unsubstantiated. And it's not because we're not believing her on here. It's because, like, there has been, like, like she can, she's said this stuff, but at the same time, we couldn't get any, like, evidence for corroboration for the, uh, for the actual situation. Let me just show you guys. Um, what, we're, what that was referring to is that um, back in the 2000s and the 2010s and all that, uh, Amanda Bynes... Uh, appears to have had a secret uh, Willie, uh, rather she appeared to have had a secret uh, Twitter account going by the name of Ashley Banks. And um, I'm sharing this article from Snopes after there was some research done. Um, like uh, uh, in here saying like, yeah, it's uh, we found no evidence of Amanda Bynes had abortion at 13 or was impregnated by her boss. It was updated on April 1st. It was published originally March 27th. Um, now, I'm, uh, now uh, let's see here. In the aftermath of the release of the streaming four-part docuseries Quite On Set, which delved into the uh, toxic environment, yep, 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 yep. Uh, let's see here. Uh, rumors resurfaced about former child star Amanda Bynes. Bynes, for her, uh, known for her role in the late 90s uh, Nickelodeon show All That and the eponymous sketch comedy series The Amanda Show, has long since been the subject of numerous social media discussions gaining traction on platforms like TikTok, YouTube, and Reddit. One prominent rumor was the unsubstantiated claims that Bynes was impregnated at age 13 by Dan Schneider, a former Nickelodeon writer and producer who had faced serious allegations of misconduct. The rumors surrounding Bynes' unconfirmed teen pregnancy by Snyder stemmed from a private account on Twitter with the handle at PersianLA27 and operating under the name Ashley Banks, which joined the social media platform in January 2014. Now, the poster on the Ashley Banks account had made a series of allegations about Bynes' past, writing in 2016, according to Distractify, can you, quote, can you imagine having an abortion at, eight, at 13 because your boss impregnated you? committed because your father touched you like uh, uh while that post didn't name schneider as the quote boss who supposedly impregnated binds many commenters drew their own conclusions snopes reached out to schneider uh, to schneider and his team for a comment but they did not immediately respond of course not they're not going to if there is any sort of allegation he would I'm have run from that for high heaven forever ago it is essential to note that even if the rumored underage pregnancy and abortion had occurred, significant challenges would be faced in verifying the medical information given California's minor consent and confidentiality laws, unless Bynes, who now lives a relatively low-key life away from the spotlight, or someone close to her came forward with the details and irrefutable proof. The Ashley Banks Twitter account, believed by some to be secretly run by Bynes herself, purportedly discussed the abuse she suffered in Hollywood and while under the care of her parents, Lynn and Rick Bynes, who had, who had her placed in a court-ordered conservatorship in 2013 at age 27, following a psychiatric hold after she reportedly set a fire on a neighbor's driveway. Bynes' conservatorship was terminated in March 2022. 
Now, in 2017, the Ashley Banks poster shared a, a photo of the former child star's partial driver's license in an attempt to prove the person behind the account was Bynes. The account also alleged that Bynes' parents were running her official account on Twitter, and they would have her again committed to a mental health facility if she did not comply with their directives. <clears throat> See, and here's a screenshot of her uh, old uh, at Persian LA27. Uh, it's me, authentic, often imitated, but never duplicated. I refuse to be silenced. My friends know how to reach me. XOXO with a California driver's license that has a, a photo of Amanda Bynes in it. It even has her name, Bynes, like the uh, last name, first name, Amanda. Uh, right. Has the address, all that shit, uh, like scribbled off. Um,. And yeah, this screen grab was uh, from uh, February 15th, 2017. Uh, however, the authenticity of the Ashley Banks account, uh, Twitter account has been called into question. While the profile picture used resembled Bynes, there is no definitive proof linking the account holder to the former actress. Bynes announced her retirement from acting in 2010, posting this message on her now inactive Twitter account per NBC News, quote, it, being an actress isn't as fun as it may seem. If I don't love something anymore, I stop doing it. I don't love acting anymore, so I've stopped doing it. I know 24 is a young age to retire, but you heard it here first. Following her uh, her Hollywood retirement, uh, Bynes faced a series of personal struggles, including legal issues related to substance abuse and mental health challenges that resulted in her hospitalization. Notably, in 2012, Bynes' driver's license was suspended. Uh, and, and after her arrest on a suspicion of, the, of driving under the influence and a hit and run. Later that year, she was involved in another hit and run. A short time after those incidents, her car was impounded. After she was pulled over for driving on a suspended license, despite her legal challenges, Bynes regained her driver's license in 2014. Now age 37, Bynes has not been active on her official Twitter account since uh, September 2019, and she rarely posts on Instagram. While rumors surround Bynes' alleged teen pregnancy and involvement with Schneider persists on social media, there is no concrete evidence to support these claims. After a number of allegations came to light about Schneider's behavior while on set, the children's cable TV channel severed ties with him in 2018. The purported evidence from the Ashley Banks Twitter account lacks credibility and Bynes' legal and personal struggles as, uh, as she retreated from the spotlight further complicate the narrative. So, basically, her going into self-imposed, like, hermitude, basically uh, pulling away from uh, public life. Retiring at age 24, right? Yeah, it, doesn't, it yeah. doesn't help in terms of getting any way to try to access whether or not she actually has access to that Ashley Banks account. And since she's not an actor anymore, anything directly relating to Amanda Bynes can only be seen at this time as still uh, speculation. So there can't be anything concrete proven about what was done there until and unless uh, Amanda Bynes decides to change her mind. <clears throat> yeah, and that, and that it entirely it, and it, that entirely is up to Amanda's choice. I mean, that's up to Amanda if she wants to decide to talk about it. Like on the one hand. I don't blame her for stepping away from uh, from Hollywood, from uh, acting at age 24 at an early age, and I don't blame her for not wanting to to to, to take uh, to take part in speaking out about any of this. Because can you imagine her having to relive whatever trauma she may have gone through during her time in Nickelodeon? Could you imagine her having to relive all this and talk about it? I don't f wish this shit on anyone over here. And see, people react differently. Some people talking about it helps release some of that trauma to literally get their story out there and say this is what happened but for some that would end up just traumatizing them further make them relive it and just cause more harm to themselves so i i honestly am happy that they're not trying to force people to tell their stories because that can just do more harm than good do you want to do you want to tell us your story no, I really don't. I don't want to go back. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. You don't have like as long as they can say like this happened to me too. Just bullet point this, this, this. But I'm not explaining any further. Yeah, I think that. Or, or if they want to tell their story but be anonymous, yeah, go. If you don't, if you want to still tell your story but not, you know, say who you are. 
That's fine too. Mm -hmm. I mean, the less trauma, the better. So yeah, I definitely don't blame her for stepping away because I mean, you, you, you know, whenever like something bad happens, but it's something so bad that it tarnishes what you are doing. For some yeah. people, it's hard to get over that hurdle. Yeah. So it's best just to completely step away from it permanently. So I, I really don't blame her at that point. I don't blame her either. Uh, in this end. Back, up, back up. Back up. At this point, yeah. Um, Kelsey in the chat, let me see what, what she was saying. Uh, uh, let's see here. Yeah, they won't put her on the show because, well, she's been so whacked out, the poor thing. There's another child star that came out uh, about this stuff on Disney, too. It all started to surface. As a former child star on stage, this shit was rampant. Uh, yeah, Orlando Brown. I remember him. Uh, let's see. I feel like anything they say is going to be discredited due to the fact that the trauma has driven them to absolute madness. Um, I get, I, I, I get what you mean. Cause like, Hey, who can, how can anyone believe what uh, a crazy girl Amanda Bynes is saying? Look at all the, the stuff she's been hospitalized and institutionalized. And she's got so many drugs in her life. And she had so much alcohol, all this stuff in her life. It was so horrible. How can we depend on anything she could have ever said? Yeah. I can see that fucking argument being, made. you know, that's the sad thing. Do you know what the sad thing about that is? A lot of child actors, a lot of even normal actors have been driven to drugs and alcohol and all of this crap. So honestly, I can't really see them. Like, I, I don't understand why they would pull that card of, oh, but look at all the stuff that they did. Okay, but look at everyone else who's done that too. And not even just actors, but like musicians and everything. Yeah, exactly. So, it, was, it, it would be a freaking... You can't really blame that thing. Oh, yeah, we can't believe her because they... she did this. Nah, that's a ridiculous excuse. No, you're right. It is, it's a, it is a ridiculous excuse, but the trouble is that unless there's a medical record uh, that someone could try to dig up from around that time of when and where that's, uh, that might have happened, and those kind of records, that would be like, what, 20... Uh, what? what 24 like what in 2000 like what 24 years ago it'd be yeah that's a good estimate. that's a good guess yeah no mm -hmm. yeah like because uh, if she was 13 at that time then who fucking knows how long it would take to actually get that to uh to to find the, that kind of uh documentation um also the joseph santos is in the chat hey up there G the joseph santos welcome to the black files uh good to see you again gentlemen good to see you too here buddy uh, let's see. Um, and yeah, Sarah Serendi. Um, the thing is that, um, for the record, Sarah, um, uh, say Anna Rose and Dragon Fang are talking via their laptop mic. That's why they sound, uh, you know, uh, like they're cutting in and out. It's the laptop microphone, so it's okay. Yeah. And yes, I had to do, figure out how to like do my math for a second. That's like, wait, 24 dummy of course 24 years ago no like we like i said and kelsey's even saying uh we'll never know for certain um not unless and and or until amanda decides to come forward but don't hold your breath right she's living her best life i believe she's going in as a uh what is she uh like a nail technician or or uh, like in something like that uh, last night last i checked on her social she was going in as a nail technician and you know what good for her yeah yeah she's uh she's working as a nail tech and uh and she's uh and she's getting her uh license for it soon in Cal in uh in california and she's going to be uh, uh, and she's taking her uh, state exam for uh, uh, to get certified, and that was w uh, where we were last on that when it came to what Amanda Bynes is up to these days, and what she's up to now. Um, yeah, and I'm even over here double checking to see <clears throat> what her actual uh, socials are. And the only one that we see here is just her uh, Instagram here at this time, and. That's it. This is all she's got up. Nothing. It's it's kind of sad. It's kind of nuts. But at the same time, that's that's the life she's choosing to live. 
And after having been a child entertainer or a younger actor, um, if that's the life you wish to live, then that's that's your choice, and that's it. No one can take that away from you. And she's. I'm honestly. Yeah, no, I'm honestly glad that she chose to retire from acting at age 24. I can't imagine that, like, considering what we know about her now, like, I can't imagine like her career going and getting any better with the trajectory that it was on. Um, actually, no, check this out. Um, in her uh, saved Instagram stories, I thought this was an old one, but I'm double checking here. Uh, let's see. Uh, back in college, she posted this two days ago. Since I haven't passed the board exam yet to get my manicurist license, I started back at school to study manicurist theory and to practice doing acrylics before taking the test again, so I'll be good to go when I get a job at a nail salon. Easy. All right, cool. Well, we can like that. Yeah. Yeah, of course. There's nothing fucking wrong with that. Ain't nobody's going to take that away from her. But Yeah, and she doesn't have to worry about dealing with, the, you know, the pressures oh, and stupidity. the drama uh, the, and the stupidity that comes with being in the, in the acting business, in the Hollywood biz. Right. Yeah, so all the stuff that she posts is just her uh, 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 being on her uh, social. And this was just put up, like, what, a week ago? And, you know, two weeks ago, her hanging out at the gym, all this good jazz. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, but um, but getting back onto the fifth episode of Quiet on the Set because uh, and the in the very first part of the episode, like Drake Bell came back on, right? Yes, uh, at the beginning of the uh, fifth episode, the one we're talking about here, um, Drake Bell started things off with his um <clears throat> with his uh uh. uh follow up on his part of the story. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the times article here. <clears throat> God almighty. I need to take a drag or something when I'm done. This is just fucking depressing, man. Okay. So hug, a te- hug your teddy bear, dude. You no, know, my teddy bear is keeping K storm busy. Let me see here. Um, Yeah, okay. Drake Bell says none of the celebrities who wrote letters of support for Brian Peck have reached out to him since then. All right, so the docuseries recounted how 41 people wrote letters of support for Peck when he was arrested back in 2003. Peck was sentenced to 16 months in prison in 2004. Bell returns for an interview with Solidarity O'Brien in episode 5 and says he has not received an apology from any of the people who wrote these letters. Bell recounts being in the courtroom for Peck's sentencing and seeing Peck's side of the courtroom filled with some, quote, recognizable faces. Bell says his side consisted of him, his mother, and his brother. Peck's supporters included friends and former co-workers like writer Strong and Will Friedel from Boy Meets World, James Marson, and Taryn Killam. Strong and Friedel spoke about the trial on their podcast on February 19th, saying, quote, We're sitting in that courtroom on the wrong side of everything. The victim's mother turned and said, Look at all the famous people you brought with you, and it doesn't change what you did to my kid. Friedel said he had a moment of realization and wondered, What the hell am I doing here? Tom DeSanto, a producer on uh, the X-Men movies, recently told People Magazine that he wrote, uh, that he wrote the letter of support with, quote, incomplete information. <clears throat> and would have not written the letter if given all the information regarding the accusations. And, uh, uh, and so there was also another bit in there that uh, Josh, uh, as that uh, uh, involves Josh Peck, uh, uh, Drake Bell's uh, co-star on Drake and Josh. Um, folks thought that uh, once this uh, once this came out, um, folks thought that Josh Peck being quiet and having said this other uh, shit on here was basically him refuting all of what uh, uh, Drake had gone through, or basically trying to talk down about about uh, Drake's experience. And Drake Bell had since gone ahead and said that he had spoken with Josh. And he also uh, asked folks online to, uh, hey, to ease up on Josh as well because they sorted their stuff out and they're still good friends. And you know, on the one and another, uh, this is actually a, a bit that uh, that I pulled up from uh, this Deadline article, uh, as that also recaps the story, uh, the the episode of uh, of Quiet on Set. Let me just show you guys right quick, um, but at the and just to show you guys the. Uh, actual article itself 
Uh, let's see, and the headline reads, Quiet on several Revelations from Episode 5 of Investigation Discovery's Toxic Kids TV docuseries. Um, here is where we mentioned Josh Peck. Let's see here. He also defends Josh Peck, who was criticized for not speaking out sooner about Bell following the release of the documentary. Bell says his former Drake and Josh co-star is, quote, a great person, and ha- they have been speaking privately. Um, yeah, that was uh, basically, he came on to Twitter, and he and Drake has said, like, uh, he asked everyone to uh, chill out and to uh, back off of... Uh, Back Quit attacking of, Josh. Yeah, back off of a uh, of attacking Josh Peck because they're still friends and everything, and there's they were actually talking shit out. So, um, all right, so that that's like the cliff note version of uh, what was going on with uh, with Drake in his part of the interview. Um, so, all right, um, any comments, anybody? Well, I certainly won't fear, feel weird uh, if I ever decide to watch Batman Beyond or Kim Possible now, you know, featuring the voices of Will Friedle. Um But, uh, okay, I like I, I when when we when we heard when we heard that when we heard like you were there with me, Juan. When we saw and we heard their names being mentioned as you know being siding with the abuser, like I immediately said, "Fucking assholes." But after hearing their what they said in their podcast, like. Okay, I'm not going to be sympathetic, but I don't think they're total assholes. And I'll leave it at that. Yeah, it's it's a little more along the lines of like they're realizing while they were discussing that, and that came out on their podcast in February before the Quiet on Set documentary came out. So that was basically them. I guess you could say they uh, they uh, were trying to get out ahead of it, but at the same time they clearly realize like hey we, like m- like maybe looking back at that shit it wasn't uh, such a good idea to be a part of it all um and that's where uh you have will friedel talk like hey what the fuck was i thinking what the f- uh what was i doing uh being on this uh uh clearly on the wrong side of history being on the wrong uh, 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 side of this uh argument supporting a guy who uh who abused a kid kind of thing so no, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. I, I get it. I get it. And you know what? God, man. I mean, it really sucks for Drake because he didn't receive not one single letter, not one letter of support or apology or anything in, during this whole ordeal. And God, man, it makes you make it makes a person. It does make a person feel like isolated. Feel like they're they're alone against the the whole fucking world, man. Right. And uh, get a load of this. I actually just double checked on uh, Drake's Twitter. He had spoken on fr- he put up on on Friday here. Um, he said, "I just had the most amazing conversation with Ryder Strong. We are all healing together. I have nothing but love and forgiveness for him." So I guess that's Drake Bell's uh, official uh, saying, like, "Okay, I'm cool with Ryder Strong also. So let's be chill." Okay. So, yeah. No. So, uh, Ryder Strong. Okay. The yeah. fact that the fact that he's got this much like open empathy for folks that he was like fucking that basically like whether they meant to or not stood against him, and he's got this big of a heart. God, that just speaks to the testament of the of this guy's character. Um, Zayana, he clearly wants to yourself. move. He clearly wants to move on. He clearly is trying to look for closure because he never got his closure. And, uh, and you know that's why he's got like continuous uh, therapy and everything that he does. He even mentioned how, um, in this episode where he was when he was talking to Soledad, that um, it's not like oh he goes into therapy for like an hour twice a week or something. It was like he was mentioning how he had uh eight hours of, uh, of uh, one-on-one therapy and then four and then four hours a week of uh, group therapy and other stuff and how going through these uh, different types of discussion with uh, other people who were also victimized, how he realized he wasn't alone and how he felt a little bit more open and a little bit more able to discuss this stuff. 
Um, Zayana, Dragon Fang, how about yourselves? Um, what do you think on how Drake's been reacting to all of this? Like, shit. You okay, ladies? Yeah. Trying to find the words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I can't even find. Can't even find the words. Well, no, I, I understand. This is a very. I, know, I understand. This is a very heavy thing to take in. Yeah. Heavy is putting it nicely. This show was monstrous. What was done? Yeah. Here. Shit. But yeah, like I said, this just speaks to the testament of this guy's heart. Um, let me see. Vicente, uh, Vicente Guerrero in the chat was saying, yeah, and so happy that Amanda Bynes is better off in life now. Acting can ruin tons of lives. Look at Eddie Furlong. Um, he was on hard drugs for years, and now he's been sober since 2018. No! The same Eddie Furlong from Terminator 2 Judgment Day? The one and only. Oh, man! Oh, that that guy! Holy shit! Yeah, no, he got. Yeah, it's not easy, is it? it? It's not an easy thing to live with, especially if you're just uh, trying to get through life and shit. Just it's fucking crazy. Yeah, no, I understand. Of course, you know, of course, and I know, you know, the based on the way we're talking about it, I mean, there are some people who might misunderstand us and think that we're actually like showing sympathy for Drake Bell. Like, because we've talked about this weeks ago, like, remember we can, we can be sympathetic. We can be understanding about Drake Bell's struggles, but he also has to be held accountable for, for, for his actions and his misdeeds as well. Yeah. And he even brought that up. He brought that up, I think unprompted uh, in uh, on this, on this uh, follow-up episode, he brought up how, yeah, I had my own problems as well. And I've got to take accountability for that, and I'm not going to try to escape that. He, the The fact that he brings that up, his own problems and his own misdeeds, and he brought that up unprompted, and he fucking owned it like a man. He owns it like a fucking adult. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing to say, you know, hey, I made a mistake. But it's another thing to actually do that unprompted without anyone saying, well, you could have done something, la, la, la. It's like, I should have done something. I did bad things. I, 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 I admit it. Own up to it. I mean, that, that's, that's a huge step in the right direction. So if anyone just kind of condemns him despite that, it's, it's kind of pot calling the kettle black. Because, I mean, it, it's, again, you... He said, I fucked up. That's good. So. No, I, I get you. No, I, I understand what you were trying to say there, Zanna. Um, yeah, no, he's like, that's, that's the one thing that I like. Anytime we see and hear folks who, like, who've been accused of shit, right? And mm -hmm. uh, they'll they'll have all the every opportunity to either uh try to own up to it or try to have an opportunity to make things right or like open a dialogue with whoever uh might have accused them or have been victimized by this person nine times out of ten that the the person accused they'll be like oh i did nothing wrong i can't possibly have done this is a a witch hunt and we've seen and we've seen far too many examples of people denying allegations and denying any of the rumors, haven't we? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to a guy like Drake Bell, who has been himself accused of having, uh, like, spoken with, uh, like, suggestively with a person that he shouldn't have been talking to, someone who might have not been of uh, the proper age, uh he fessed up to it he owned it he owns it like a man um he took his uh he took his his sentencing he took his community service he took every bit of probation everything that was thrown at him and he took it like a man he took it like an adult should like okay i fucked up these are the consequences all right i'm going to live with the consequences i'm uh, says i'm going to deal with them and i won't 
and I will endeavor to not do this shit again. Right? Is that how, right. how you fucking do this? That's how we're supposed to do it, right? Of course. But, uh, I honestly don't... I'm honestly, like I said, that's why I have nothing but respect for the guy. Um, even with his fuck-ups uh, on here, so... I'm going to continue on in this end. Since we mentioned uh, earlier uh, the other stuff of what uh, Dan Schneider himself had uh, allowed to happen on the uh, shows or that he was insisting on happening. Um, that he, for instance, he, uh, I'm back on the uh, on the Time article. Dan Schneider reached out apparently to Giovanni Samuels uh, after Quiet on Set aired. Uh, Solid Out O'Brien interviewed Giovanni Samuels and Brian Hearn, two former All That cast members, who spoke out about their experiences as the two of the few black people on Schneider's shows. They say that they were surprised by the fallout from the documentary and they and the support they received. O'Brien then asked if they had spoken to Schneider in the weeks following the release of the docuseries. Samuel says Schneider reached out to her a week before the documentary aired and asked if she could give a quote Give a quote of support. O'Brien asks if Schneider knew that she was in the documentary, and Samuels affirms that he knew. Samuels said that when she worked with Schneider on the set of Henry Danger, he asked her if she had a good time. Um, she said that she told him she was terrified of him because he had the power to make people stars, and she was intimidated. Uh, and quote, I wanted to do a good job, uh, uh, Giovanni Samuels says. Yeah, it's like, she basically, in uh, I was since I've got my notes on, on the uh, episode, um <clears throat> yeah she yeah and i was intimidated by you um yeah she it basically was asked by him like hey do you think like with this documentary do you think you could give a quote of support on my end i've been nice to you haven't i like no i'm fucking terrified of your ass dude uh-uh no she wasn't gonna fucking just go ahead and write a a letter of approval for him yeah, that wasn't going to happen. And since he knew that she was going to be in this documentary, uh, then he must have also known uh, that she was going to mention her own experiences and how uh, some of the other uh, cast members of all that were being treated. There was talk about how there was one girl who, before Amanda Bynes came out, how she was the one that uh, Dan Schneider was getting uncomfortably snuggly or uncomfortably uh, close to. And... As she was in the middle of puberty, she was starting to get a little bit fluffier, right? As kids get when you're uh, when they're growing, and then once she hit puberty head on, the the baby weight started going off, and she started developing. And apparently, that's when he didn't want to have anything to do with her anymore, because by then Amanda Bynes had already been part of the show, uh, been uh, joined up with the cast, and been uh, joined up with the show. So that's when he got quote like supposedly he got tired of that. Um, now, the next guy that we're going to talk about is, uh, Shane Lyons, who was, uh, also on All That, and he had actually, he nearly suffered a similar fate to Drake Bell. Very nearly. Um, so let me just, go, uh, break this down for you guys. Uh, so another former All That cast member speaks out. Shane Lyons was a cast member of All That from 2000 to 2004 and said that he also worked with Brian Peck, the guy who harmed Drake. So, uh, let's see here. He worked that, you know, he says that hearing Bell speak out about his experience in episode three was gut wrenching. When, uh, O'Brien asked him why he felt the need to come forward now, he said he feels, quote, the only way we can change is to really evaluate the past. And he felt he had some insight to share. Of his experience, Lyons said, quote, I feel very lucky and blessed that nothing like that happened to me, but there was definitely some passes that were made. He goes on to say that Peck asked him if he knew what blue balls were. And he thought at the time he was talking about racquetballs. As I think back now as a 36-year-old, I would never have a conversation with a 13... Uh, would I ever have a conversation with a 13-year-old boy like he had with me? No. Yeah, no, fucking uh, this creepy dude, fucking uh, uh, Brian Peck was talking about blue balls to this kid. Oh my god! He says, that like when I heard that, when I heard that in the interview, like I just 
freaking face pumped so hard. It's true. Someone like uh, a neighbor from across the uh, parkway came over and asked if we were all right because they heard a thud. <laughs> I'm joking. That didn't happen. Sorry, but I just delivered that deadpan. Uh, let's see. He says that an enforceable tactic to protect kids on set would be to introduce legal restrictions, preventing any person convicted of molesting a child from ever setting foot on a Hollywood set again. The series has helped bring the issue of children's safety to the forefront of the entertainment industry. According to The Wrap, since the year is covered by Quiet on Set, Nickelodeon and Disney have instituted background checks for anyone working with minors. <clears throat> And uh, thankfully, that shit hasn't uh, propagated since, so far as we know. Um, so uh, let me get back into the uh, uh, YouTube chat over here, and then we'll continue discussing over here, guys. Uh, yeah, Vicente Gros saying, uh, yeah, uh, uh, T2, Eddie Furlong. He was on heroin and coke, along with actress Monica Kina for a time. Together, they seemed like a train wreck. Then one day, Eddie and Monica were doing acid and H. Uh, one day, Eddie looked at what he had become, even blaming himself for Monica doing H with him. One day, he flushed it down the toilet and not looked back after rehab 12 months. Yeah. Shit. It's not easy to break away from that kind of shit. And the fact that he uh, that he has been sober since 2018 uh, uh, is impressive, and I'm happy for him. So, good job. Yeah, most people can't do that. Yeah. Huh? Most people try to stop, and then they relapse. And they just can't get clean. So the fact that he just looked at what he became, like, no, nope, I'm done. And flushing down the toilet, that's, like, extreme. But it works. Because then you can't, you know, go digging in the trash or anything to find it. Yeah. It's the easiest way to get uh, to get rid of it and uh, get rid of the temptation. You can't uh, mm -hmm. unflush drugs. So, yeah. Nope. Then again, you probably shouldn't be flushing it down the toilet either, introducing that shit into the into the uh, water table and the water supply. But I, I digress. That's a, true. That's a but I mean, how many times have people actually flushed it down the toilet? Like, um, you know, cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. True. True. Uh, I'm. I'm just. I was just bringing that up just to bring it up over here. But yeah, no, we do not. Say that anyone should flush things down the toilet. We yeah, don't. We here condone. at the Flock do not cond uh, condone flushing shit down the toilet. You shouldn't flush there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That, that, that's our that's our obligatory disclaimer for uh, don't clog up your toilet. There. <laughs> we gotta have some kind of levity over here. I think you know. Um, but yeah, it's like it's crazy how depressing how uh sad all this shit comes out like we've got issues in, uh, related to uh um the uh, like the the two writers who they were uh women who were writing on all that and they were the only writers on the amanda show who were women as well and that they were made to share no no it was just on the amanda show the first season of amanda show they were the only women there and they were made to share a single salary which is against union laws. I don't know what the fuck kind of uh, what the fuck kind of uh, legal loopholes that could have been to get around that shit. But I swear to God, that's just like abhorrent. Who the fuck can uh, get away with that? It's 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 insane. And like I said, the, there is also the uh, the the racial implications for some of the other actors. You've got uh, you've got. Like I said, the, the, the you've got guys like uh, um, like what's his name, Brian Hearn, being uh, typecast into black stereotypes, like a gangster or or whatever else going on in there, and uh, you also have just the the weird, creepy innuendo that uh that what's his face would uh that Dan Schneider would have uh snuck into uh in, into the programming there's all the all these feet all this other uh stuff with someone's uh with with uh sexual jokes like i'm so wet i'm not i'm not i'm i'm uh, i i need to get wet over here i need and just like oh god damn man what the hell so i'm over here thinking like what the fuck guys 
Yeah, no, it's 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 absolutely fucking gross and just up upsetting is what it is. And that's putting it the nice way over here too, because like it's it's upsetting. I, I'm I'm over here just like I would be beyond upset. I would be like icked out all to hell, and I wouldn't want to have to. I wouldn't want to fucking look at anything after that because of how uh, just reprehensible the shit is. And apparently Dan Schneider's dis- defense for all that was, uh, was oh, it's only uh, offensive in hindsight. It only looks like that. Um, it, it only looks like that because that's what we uh, think about it now. Uh, but that's not what we were thinking about back then. Back then we were just thinking, oh, kids will think that's funny. Maybe, yeah, no. but it's still gross. Shit, man. So... Someone give me thoughts right quick. Uh, well, you already know my thoughts on this. And, and you know, it's screw Dan Schneider's, for, uh, Dan Schneider's stupid retort, Schneider. his stupid defense, or Schneider's uh, stupid defense for, for all this. Like, no, dude, that, 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 that that's about as, that's about as uh, flimsy as, I don't know, st- the uh, stupid, uh, like a, a, a that's about as flimsy as a as a piece as a plastic utensil. All right, it's, it's, it's um it's, also uh, Vicente was over here saying one funny point. Eddie Furlong laughed at while telling the story. Acid started to wear off, and then Eddie asked Monica, "Shit, do we have any heroin?" And then she says, "Uh, dude, you flushed it." Ow! Oh <laughs> wow! It's like. Yeah, no, it's it is really hard to get out of uh, being drug addicted and everything. So, but at the same time, it's uh, it's just like wh- like what other ways can you deal with this stuff? Um, but thankfully, uh, and thankfully, when it comes to uh, having ha- like having enough self awareness to start breaking away, even going cold turkey on uh, on something like heroin, it's. It's, a, it's terrible. A, it's absolutely yep. fucking terrible. So, like, it's it's really fucking depressing. But at the same time, now we know, um, like this was the cost of what some of our uh, favorite entertainment uh, from our uh, youth and our halcyon days cost. You know that that's that was the price that was paid. And it was paid uh, by uh, for the uh, at the cost of the innocence and uh, the safety of uh, these kids, these actors. Yeah, and uh, also in this uh, headline in the deadline article, um, we've got some some good news about all this stuff with uh, uh, Brian Hearn. One of uh, one uh, one of the issues was that uh, when he uh, when he was actually uh, fired from all that. It was because his mother, uh, Tracy, she was the one who would put her foot down in defense for her son. You know, whenever there was anything that was like uh, objectionable or anything that 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 uh, crossed any sort of line. And she was being a good protective mother and all that. But that did cause a rift between them over the years. And uh, apparently... Like you're, you know, this is actually some good news over here, guys. So, uh, let's see. One of the most heartbreaking moments in the first four episodes of Quiet on Set is when Hearn's mother Tracy talks about the day Brian was fired from all that. She says it was a moment where she knew Brian would blame her for speaking up for him and it fractured their relationship for many years. In fact, she reveals in episode five that watching the docu series, uh, the documentary, brought them back together. Brian admits that watching his mom discuss that moment helped him heal and finally pinpoint what triggered his resentment towards his mom, ultimately allowing him to let it go. So that's good news, at least. You know, like, hey, that, I, that, yeah. that is good news. That is very much good news. So, yeah. It really is. And I'm over here wanting to just freaking kill things, but. What uh, just for the uh, travesty that these uh, that uh, that kids would uh, have to deal with? But because uh, at the same time, when you're a child, when you're an actor, you're thinking like like listen, your mom, like my mom, she's hampering my opportunity to help our family. She's hampering my opportunities to grow as an artist or as a professional. And 
she just got me fired from like the biggest gig of my life and that sort of resentment and that sort of anger and shit it's not easy to break away from now being a parent i don't i don't remember if brian hurt himself as a parent uh, but like being a parent ba- uh, 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 growing up and seeing the stuff in hindsight is easily the best way to uh help in getting that perspective like saying like there's no fucking way i would allow my child to go through what i went through or there's no way in hell that i would allow anything like this to happen to my kid um as long as this is something that they desire for their uh for their career for their life um but th- that's just that's just uh, th- uh, that's just my uh, uh, my take on that um and like i said at least that's some good news in uh something positive that came out of uh, uh of the experience at least as far as some of the actors are concerned or the former actors um let me see here so yeah uh, like fucking dan schneider trying to ask like hey could you please say nice things about me too please like uh, that's just fucking weasley that's just no fucking gross like no buddy what the hell i'm not gonna fucking uh I'm not gonna fucking uh, write you a glowing letter of recommendation after the the shit that I went through over the years working under you. No, screw that, buddy. I mean, that's not gonna happen. There's one fucking thing that I came uh, that I found as we were looking up at the the follow up for this. You're gonna fucking uh, you're you're gonna find this kind of gross in a way, but at the same time. I, you know what? I'll let you guys be the judge. Um, this one article from The Independent uh, from the UK over here. I'm going to go ahead and read this to you guys. And uh, you're probably going to want to smack things because this is initially what I wanted to do. Headline on it reads, Quiet on set interviewers left, uh, rather, Quiet on set viewers left, quote, disappointed by bonus episode. This felt like pure exploitation. Investigation Discovery's bombshell docuseries dropped its latest episode on Sunday, the 7th of April. This article comes by way of Inga Parkell, uh, or Inga Parkle, however that's pronounced. Uh, let's see. Quiet on set. The Dark Side of TV has left some viewers feeling shortchanged with the content of its bonus episode, Breaking the Silence. The bombshell documentary, which seems which sees a former uh, uh, Nickelodeon star's pull back the curtains and reveal a toxic underbelly of abuse, harassment, racism, and sexism on the show, set of shows led by TV executive Dan Schneider, aired its fifth episode on Sunday, April 7th, weeks after the first four parts arrived on Max. Ahead of the finale's release, TV network investigation Discovery teased that it would feature quote no, that it would feature uh, previous quite on set participants, including Drake Bell, all that cast members Giovanni Samuels and Brian Hearn, Hearn's mother Tracy Brown, as well as new voices, including former all that cast member Shane Lyons. Episode five will be quote building off the revelations and explored uh, in the first four episodes, and include a conversation led by Soledad O'Brien, where the industry can go from here. As promised, in the episode, Drake Bell speaks to O'Brien about the responses. Uh, let's see here. Yep, 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 yep. All right, so we already got this part. Elsewhere in the episode, Samuel recalls a conversation he had with Schneider. Yep. Okay, so I was told I was terrified of him. I told him, you had the power to be stars, and I uh, was intimidated by you, she recounts. Uh, meanwhile, Hearn reacts to Schneider's 19-minute apology video, saying that, quote, Dan was an actor before all this, and so I think he brushed off some of his chops and gave us a nice performance. Yeah, since the episode premiere, several Redditors have issued complaints about its content, arguing that this installment offered nothing new and instead reiterated the same information shared in earlier episodes. Uh, one person wrote, quote, I'm pissed I waited so long for just for this episode to have two people blabbing and repeating the same thing over and over again. A second agreed. This episode was so disappointing, and to make matters worse, that interviewer was unbearable. She, uh, the episode looked just kind of, ex- uh, just looked kind of cheap. Others accused the producers of qu- trying to, quote, milk the series with this episode. Quick ratings grab, rehash everything we already knew, someone said. Another added, this felt like pure exploitation. Really disappointed that they chose to milk the attention that was garnered by the documentation of some horrific atrocities. The Independent has contacted Investigation Discovery for comment. Uh, Quiet on Set is now out on Max in the U.S. and Discovery Plus in the U.K. Okay, so am I the only one who thought that this little... Uh, article from the independent was basically just a cheap shot 
or am I nuts? I'd like, I'd like the, the way, the way it's being written and the way it yeah, the way it's being written. It sounds very much like it's uh it's, it's, it's a cheap shot. Like, and I don't know why they would do that. Like, I guess, come on, dude. Like, I don't know who this Inga Parkel, uh, Parkel is, uh, but apparently, uh, she's an entertainment reporter for the Independent. Um, she started in uh, in 2021, and she's also had written articles on uh, for Insider, BuzzFeed, and the New York Daily News, and Screen Rant and TV Fanatic. Okay, great, good for her. Um, if this, if the whole point was to try to find negative feedback about the episode, then all she did was go to Reddit and grabbed a couple comments. What the fuck? I'm sorry, but that was like, I can't believe that a whole fucking uh, uh, episode was, uh, uh, I, I, rather a whole article was uh, ri- uh, written out for, oh, hey, I'm going to grab a couple of uh, Redditor comments and I'm not going to uh, put any screenshots by name or anything like that. Like, fucking seriously? Wow. You might That's well- completely yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> That's unprofessional. No, I, I, I guess uh, I guess that's the standards over at the Independent. But what do I know? I'm just an asshole on the internet, right? Yeah, well, you're our asshole on the internet, Wancho. I'm even double checking here to see if there was uh, a fucking uh, bit from uh, let's see here where the actual Reddit article is. Nope, nope. There's no link. Nope, I don't see a fucking link here at all. Yeah, there's no link. There's no like where 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 is this uh, uh, Reddit comment about the episode? Anybody? Anyone? No, no. No. Nope. Okay. Nope. Then this was a total waste of a, a web page and a news article from a supposedly reputable uh, 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 news outlet. But where are the bad guys? Because where? Because what? I say shit to uh, people online who are assholes. Yeah, sure. No, I like. I'm literally. I was going over this. I'm like, okay, this just seems cynical. And then going further, like, okay, not only is it cynical, it's just like bad writing. Fuck. Uh, let's see here. Sarah Serenity was uh, saying, oh yeah, Kelsey came back. Uh, Sarah Serenity, I mean, you split piece two with ham and cornbread. I can't lie, I'm tempted to go back and watch all of that. And the man show justifying the adult jokes. Uh, and Kelsey was telling her, I, yeah, leave it. He gets paid for every rewatch. Uh, I know I still love the shows because they're a part of my childhood, but I hope the actors are doing better now. Um, under the circumstances... Anyone who uh, dealt with the mistreatment that, uh, from Dan Schneider, if they're uh, if they're able to uh, live past that, then I'm happy for them in, uh, 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 at this point. But if they haven't been able to, or they haven't found any justice for anything happened to them, then the one thing that I wish is for them to have the support that they need in order to come forward. Very least uh, the support that they need in order to uh, uh, be able to speak their piece here. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, double check to see uh, if there's any other stuff in our thoughts over here. Um, and Jose, try not to uh, shift your phone or your microphone too much. Yeah, no, sorry about that. Uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, Vicente is so sad to see uh, to know lots of our uh, favorite Nickelodeon shows have this dark history. Have this dark history, yeah, it really is because it's like this is like you don't expect something like that to be happening. Uh, but then again, when we're kids, how are we supposed to know? You know, we can only uh, we can only look back at this stuff having found out after the fact. You know, like, uh, so with us being younger, at, like y- younger kids consuming uh, uh, this content, consuming these uh, TV shows and uh, uh, live comedy shows that were being made on Nickelodeon, who were we to be able to differentiate or to understand 
what an innuendo was, what a dick joke was, what a cum shot joke was. How are we supposed to know that stuff unless we were already somehow exposed to that shit? In which case, that already goes to show that we didn't have that good of a of an upbringing to begin with if we were being exposed to that stuff in any manner that might have been uh, detrimental. Or at the very least, in a in a fashion that wasn't educated well enough. Um, so obviously, we can't have, we can't be blamed for how we interacted with this stuff when it was being made back in the day. But what we can do is hold ourselves accountable and hold accountable the folks who made it now, and be able to call it out even though hindsight's 2020 sometimes hindsight's the only time we'll ever get a glimpse of the full picture uh what do you guys think nope i i agree 100 percent with uh with the with the statement Same. i mean i agree because of course we're not going to know what uh, uh, of course of course we wouldn't be able to know back then like when we were kids watching it like two decades ago we didn't know any other. Yeah, how many things flew over our head because we just didn't see it. Because we were innocent. We had innocent minds. Right. So so look at it like this. How many adult jokes went over our head when we were kids? And then we rewatch and we're like, oh. Oh, oh so that's not that oh, okay. Oh yeah. yeah. No, yeah, there was there was there was no fucking way we could have known that shit. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you ladies off. Sorry, go on. Oh, no, no, it's, it's also even if we caught it um with that age, we wouldn't have really no known what to do or what to say because I mean Let's be honest, how many people actually listen to kids when you say something? Next to never. Yeah, exactly my point. Okay. What's that? Yeah, like, oh, hey, what, what the, like, how are we gonna uh, hold this person accountable? Oh, there's a kid who's coming forward? Oh, well, we can't take them uh, at their word. They're, they they're, don't know what they're saying. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're saying. They're just uh, they're kids in their imagination. Yup. Fucking seriously. Is that kind of like... Ridiculous. Is that kind of ridiculousness that I'm fucking... I, I honestly wish that we were joking, but I mean... Yeah. We've seen it time and time again, and it's... It's very disappointing. Okay. Yeah, and unfortunately, um, we happen to know folks who have lived these kind of experiences who would try their damnedest to uh, speak up and would try their damnedest to fight back if in, like, in these kind of experiences only to be met with the same kind of ridicule, whether they were children or when they were adults. It like I, I still don't understand to this day how when there's an accusation it's not taken uh ser it's not like even if even if the it, it like if you were to go to by the assumption that, oh well they're lying about it how do we know until we find out how, how do we know until unless we look into it unless we dig further unless we actually try to find evidence if there is evidence to find you know Right. Even if you want to assume that a child is lying about something like that happening to them, you owe it to them and you owe it to the truth. You owe it as being just a fucking adult in the room or being just a fucking general, a uh, decent human being in general to fucking put the effort into like, OK, I'm not like I'm not sure if uh, like what you're saying is extremely harsh so I don't know if I can, uh, I don't know if uh, that's the truth, if it's true, but I'm going to help look for, I'm going to look for evidence. And if I do find out that what you're telling me is true, then we're going to deal with this head on, or we're going to deal with this and there will be consequences. The person hurt you, right? Like th at the very least, that's the fucking least that a grown up can do. 
if you want exactly. to go on that assumption. But like, I don't make those kind of fucking assumptions at all. So like, if a kid's fucking saying something like that, I'll fucking believe. Like, okay, I will believe the child first because the child doesn't have much reason to lie about something like that, and I would look for whatever evidence there might be uh, regarding the adult in question. And I will, I would personally put that adult to ta- like take that adult to task, because um, I've seen people being ch- like said like uh, told that they're being liars or that they're making it up for clout or for influence or shit like that. And unfortunately, there are motherfuckers who would fabricate that kind of shit. Uh, but then there are also, uh, 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 but the only thing that they do is that they uh, end up harming actual victims people who actually were harmed uh by like sexual or physical or emotional abuse from someone someone that they trust and it only ends up hurting other victims in the future like tell me when i'm telling lies here you gotta at least take the children's uh word at face value until there's enough evidence to prove or disprove and there has Mm -hmm. to uh, there has to be an investigation there has to. And you can't just like, and even if there's like some fucking situation where there would be an adult, like a, like someone who's like a guardian or someone who's a, who's uh like, uh, it's, it, or they're like a family member. And if they're the one who's being accused or they're the one who's in charge of the child's safety, it's that per- parent or guardian's, first responsibility to side with the child hands down your parents should be your first advocates they should be your first best friend when it comes to believing you in something like that they should they, they shouldn't be the first one to try to throw you under the bus or say like oh well, i don't believe you or oh you're oh you're you're making this up or some shit but i digress what can we fucking what can I fucking say? Like unfortunately this shit does happen. But that doesn't mean that we have to allow it to continue happening, happen, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Exactly. Sarah Serenity is over here saying, uh when uh when it comes to trauma, it takes a lot of strength to speak out. Bravo Juan, you spoke of it very beautifully. Rocco's modern life and Ren and Stippy are examples of missing the adult jokes. Yeah. Remember the choky oh chicken? God, those had so many adult jokes. It wasn't even funny. Yeah, no, seriously. And Skippy and Rocco. Yeah. Okay, uh, I really can't. I'm a, I'm 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 biased because I grew up watching those shows, and I actually like those cartoon shows. Yeah, but now <laughs> back, you can see the fucking adult. I jokes can see there. it. Yes, the choky I can see chicken it. restaurant in Rocco's Modern Life. And then they changed it to the chewy chicken in the final season. Yeah, yeah they changed it to chewy chicken because the profession of Rocco. Well, Rocco himself, he worked at a comic book store, right? Yeah, kind of a lot of comics. <laughs> well, what is it? I'm pretty sure it's explained. Oh Wait, no, you mean Rocco's- oh you mean in where he was trying to get a. Oh, where he was trying to get other part-time jobs and stuff. Oh, yes. oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was yes. That's oh, what we're looking at. The, the, the phone. <laughs> the phone The phone Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. Oh, I shouldn't be laughing, but... This my... is the kid? And she fucking hangs up. Oh, God. I, I fucking remember that. We were just like... To make sure that it, it was... I was like, we were remembering it correct, right? I'm like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it was. Yeah. Okay. It was yeah. a temp job. It was a temp yeah, job. Yeah, that was one where he was doing a temp, like all sorts of different temp jobs, and one of them he was working yeah. a phone sex line. Like, oh baby, oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. And then got Mrs. Big Head on the line. Yeah, and like, well, that was awkward. <laughs> Mrs. Big Head. It was hilarious. Hang up. Like, uh, <laughs> at least even there, like uh, you can see what you're saying. At least even there. They had, like, okay, that's my fucking neighbor. That's fucking wrong as fuck. That and my <laughs> neighbor's husband doesn't like me anyway, or my dog, so... Yeah, no, thank you. I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. At least there are some, 
like even in the illustration of that there's some weird red lines in in uh in context where they don't cross it or at least when they realize oh shit i mean like if the the whole situation was rocco was looking for quick cash and he was trying to get whatever temp gigs he could to make up his money like hey what the fuck are you gonna do <laughs> right and everyone's yeah. like, like a, a freaking like adult or a fucking like uh uh coded as like 20 somethings or whatever right at least the around that yeah that's right right so yeah no that was just the like that was one part of one episode his actual job was that he worked in a comic book store and he had to work with this fucking toad or whatever this well, well, whatever the fucking guy's name and instead of having hair plugs he actually had like corks in his scalp or whatever like actual like corks like from a like that you'd get out for like for like a wine bottle as his hair plugs you know to plug his hair or whatever you know yeah like i remember oh. that shit like oh haha i get it plugs but the point is like there is a lot of innuendo that goes on in some of the uh uh that uh that some of the uh cartoons got away with that obviously you couldn't get away with uh these days like okay one other example was in rugrats you know how in like some of the earlier seasons of rugrats how there were like these weird like different perspectives of something happening and then it pans out as like oh is this something that's uh totally benign and it's totally normal and there was one bit that looked like a uh, penis entering in and out back and forth or whatever I I don't remember what they zoomed out of. Um, Jose, do you remember what I'm talking about here? Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. It's in the beginning of the episode, and it looked like, um, as they were opening up, it looked like a close-up shot of someone's butt, and then they zoomed out, and it turned out to be the tongue inside uh, the dog Spike's mouth. Oh, God, I think you're right. God, yeah, like they, there was so much weird little. Oh, yeah. It looked like a butt was grinding. What the hell, Nickelodeon? What the hell was wrong with them? Well, shit was fucking crazy and gross and weird in the nineties. I don't know what to tell you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think there's really not much else to say about tonight's topic. I mean, I think we've pretty much covered all bases. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah so um i think we can go ahead and start wrapping stuff up over here uh yeah uh yeah fuck what's his face the the uh joseph santos how dare you right fucking hell uh matthew coburn ghostbusters one and two space balls blazing saddles so many had more jokes that i never got until i was older uh sarah serenity i love those cartoons it wasn't until i watched it again that i saw the adult jokes mrs bighead always had a thing for rocco uh the nudist episode on rocco's modern life right that was so weird in it was the 90s no fucks were given nothing was held back it's so fucking weird when we can look back at that stuff now and see like jesus how the fuck did this get past the censors i don't fucking know uh but that's in terms of like trying to talk about it in terms of the cartoons but the uh, live action stuff happening with uh, child actors. That's a totally different ball game. Yeah, they did not deserve the treatment that they had gone through. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys start wrapping up. Zayana, Dragon Fang, um, any last thoughts, uh, last words, last ideas, or any other uh, uh, like anecdote or anything that you want to bring up in regards to this? So we could start wrapping this up here. No, just I, I got nothing. I got nothing either. Yeah, I that was a ride. So. It's okay. <laughs> that was a ride. That was a giant roller coaster ride. It was. It was again. Wreck. It was a wreck of a mess. Uh, but uh, but in any case, uh, I'm I'm glad that y'all at least uh had enough uh fortitude with you to stick with us on all this. How about you, Jose? Mm -hmm. Uh, your thoughts over here. Okay, so as far as Drake Bell is concerned, I'm glad that he was able to get this story out of the open, and I'm glad that uh, he was able to make uh, he was able to make some sort of amends. He was able to re-extend the bridge to Josh Peck. 
um, throughout this whole ordeal. Um, man, it's again, like it's, and it's, a tr and it's amazing that he went through all this, like not only having to go through the trauma, but everything follow everything that happened after the fact, um, the shock that so many people supported the fucking bastard Ryan Peck and just going through like isolation, not getting a single fucking letter, not getting a single letter of support from anybody throughout that horrible ordeal. And yeah, of course, like he said, he has his own issues, issues that he himself caused, but, and, and we've already talked about it, that he owned up to it. So good on him. Um, I'm just hoping that he'll be able to move on going forward. He'll be, he'll be able to find his own closure, find his own peace and just, continue to you know live in the path that he is right now without fucking it up again and now as for the other child actors that came forward uh, during this uh, fifth episode the three uh, ones that came forward um yeah i know they voiced their displeasure against dance uh, dan schneider and as they should because that guy is a piece of shit because he is responsible for allowing this type of environment like allowing these things to get away with it like under his nose and I, I'm also, and I'm also hoping for the same thing. I'm hoping that they'll be able to find their closure as well. Um, I know it takes a lot of guts to go out there and uh, tell your story, knowing that you would have to relive all the all those memories. And you know that's and that's not fair to them. But you know it's it takes a lot of it takes a lot of bravery to do that. And hopefully, this will inspire more child actors who went through the same the same crap that they did um to come forward and speak up as well yeah here's hoping and uh, like i said as long as the conversation uh remains open for this stuff and as long as there is a way to uh continue to have these kind of dialogues out in public it's like that there's going to be where you better believe that we'll continue to uh uh support this kind of stuff here because like uh, like we uh, one of our motto is your voice our mission over here at the Ravens flock we can't speak we can't speak out and help bring truth to power unless you know we have others who are willing to come out on their with, with their sides of the story uh whether they've been dealing with any sort of mistreatment or uh any similar sort of issue in the world of uh nerd and pop culture over here in the anime community and the uh anime cons uh that we've gone to there's so many different people who have dealt with catastrophes left and right either from other cosplayers or from uh like convention guests or convention staff things like that and the stuff that we hear about in public with uh, actors and voice actors and uh uh celebrities having their own troubles and their own uh trifles to deal with as well their own trials and tribulations um all right so yeah you know, here's hoping that uh the dialogue can continue all right jose so we could go ahead you know what i'll go over what here. we expect on tomorrow night's episode of wrestle rewind well, before we get into that, I do want to get into a couple of announcements. Since Angel is not here to plug his show, um, I do want to remind our viewers that Los Amigos Play will be coming back this Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern right here at Huge Spin Kick. And we will continue the story of the Metal Gear series by going into the sequel game, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Now, the story of this game is split twofold. It's a very complicated story. Lots and lots and lots of mysteries, lots of riddles uh, in this game. I will be playing for the first part of Sons of Liberty, and uh, y'all can get y'all can take uh, take shots at me while I'm while I'm trying to put while I'm trying to quote be sneaky. <laughs> we will judge you. We will judge you. We will judge you eyes. like we judged one. Yeah. While munching on muffins, on muffins. Judges, yeah. <laughs> yes, don't don't screw up. We will, will judge harshly. Oh my goodness! All right, yeah, no, I, I, I I'm. I'm <laughs> on the <hot laughs> I'll be watching you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and of course, just want to remind everybody that on Sunday, April twenty first, we have our next quarterly annual subathon where we will be playing uh the Super Mario Party of uh, for the for the Nintendo Switch. And uh, our subathon is going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern. I still haven't come up with the title yet, but don't worry, folks. I am a master at coming up with very clever titles, so I will give a super awesome title for this one. And, of course, 
Um, it's going to be on Sunday, April 21st at 1 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on YouTube. This is a subathon. Unlike the watch party, the subathon, our goal is to get our numbers of subscribers up while we are playing video games and just enjoying ourselves. Right, Juan? Yep, you damn right over here, Jose. All right, we pre- uh, uh, and uh, as as far as tomorrow night can, is concerned, what are we uh, expecting over here on Wrestle Rewind, Joe? Oh my God, we're expecting a special edition of Wrestle Rewind. We just got through an amazing wrestling weekend, uh, uh, all revolving around WWE's WrestleMania, and we will be covering uh, uh, this. And tomorrow night's edition will be a special one. It'll be Main Event Thursday where we will be talking about the main event top matches of Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor, NXT Stand and Deliver, Mm -hmm. and the main events for night one and night two of WWE's WrestleMania 40, which was over. It was so amazing. It was over at the Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It was a train wreck of a weekend, but we loved every minute of it. It was so uh, ridiculous, and um, I can't help but, uh, uh, but and I can't help but uh, love the storytelling that happened and everything on there. So, um, y'all, if you guys are interested in talking about pro wrestling or uh, hearing about us talk about pro wrestling, then you better believe that um, you can uh, you can check in with us on that uh, tomorrow night on Wrestle Rewind. Oh, that's uh, right. Let me see. Main event Thursday. The four main events for, for four shows during WrestleMania weekend, and we'll talk about the, all of it. Real quick, even though WrestleMania was split into two separate nights, should that be count as two separate main events, or should they both be just like one thing or one main event? Like, does it really count if it's split in two? I think it does because last, because last year we talked about the main event of night one and night two. No, I know, but like, does that count as like being one main event, or is that two main events? Uh, let's just keep it at two main events. Let's not confuse mm-hmm. ourselves, man. I don't want you to go cross. Don't go cross-eyed on us, Juan. What? Oh man, he did it. I'll live. All right, I appreciate it. <laughs> but yes, we. Ho- I hope you. Go- I hope to see you guys tomorrow night. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Me and Juan, we're going to be reviewing all four of these main events, and it's going to be fantastic. All right. Uh, then that takes care of that. And folks, you better believe that any new uh, updates or uh, developments in this story, uh, whether uh, anything else co- comes up in, uh, in the allegations against Dan Schneider, or if there is any other story that delves into the darker side of nerd and pop culture, you better believe that we'll cover it right here on this show, on this program, the Uncensored and Uncompromising Interview and Review Podcast of the Ravens Flock, The Black Files, hosted by yours truly, Juan Arouse. So be sure to request access as we go live every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, simulcasting on YouTube and Kick. Hit the subscribe and the follow button, ring the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our content, become an interflocker by hitting the join button, and until next time, continue to follow us on Facebook.com, where did it go? Slash the Ravens Flock, Twitter.com slash Ravens Flock 13, Instagram.com slash the Ravens Flock online, Kick.com slash Ravens Flock, and of course, remember to hit the subscribe button and ring the table and notification bell right here on our flagship platform, youtube.com slash the Ravens Flock. Humble home of the Black Files, plus something to play, Wrestle Rewind and the Ravens Flock. For Jose Cascon as Anna uh, uh, Rose and Dragon Fan Cosplays, I'm Juan Rouse. This has been the Black Files, and we...